In this lesson, we will learn about cavitation. Cavitation is a very important phenomena for control valve when it is installed in the process line. Learning about cavitation is important for a design engineer and maintenance engineer and also from the asset integrity point of view it is very important so in this particular lesson we will learn about what is cavitation why the cavitation occurs and how to get rid of cavitation how cavitation occurs so before going into details of cavitation it is required to know three things number one Bernoulli's theorem number two the equation of continuity and number three the vena contractor I have made videos on these topics already so I will request everybody to first see those lectures then only we should go into cavitation so what we have learned from the uh, from the equation of continuity and from the Bernoulli's theorem that at vena contractor fluid velocity as at the highest and this highest velocity is at the expense of the pressure energy of the liquid so the at the point of the vena contractor which is as you can see in the picture this for this portion the velocity is maximum v is maximum v is maximum at this point at this point v is maximum and p is lowest so as you can see that the pressure is initially this is the pressure at this point this is the pressure at this point this is the pressure at this point pressure is gradually decreasing near the vena contractor and at the point of the vena contractor it is the lowest amount of pressure okay so assuming the fluid is incompressible that is it is liquid and the pressure falls below the vapor pressure the pressure falls below the vapor pressure so if you want to know that what is vapor pressure then there is a separate lecture on these topics and there is a vapor what is vapor pressure what is boiling uh, these things are discussed uh, separately so I don't want to uh, mix all these things all together so I would request that uh, if you are not understanding what is vapor pressure then you should refer to that video so point of discussion here is at the point of the vena contractor pressure is lowest and this lowest point of pressure may be lower than the vapor pressure of the liquid now at the constant temperature when the pressure of the liquid or the fluid becomes the less than the vapor pressure that is the at this point at this this point the P the pressure is less than the vapor pressure of the liquid as a result bubble formation occurs so as you can see the bubbles forms in this fashion so now the bubble bubbles are formed now again when the pressure recovers or when the pressure again increases at this point above the vapor pressure above the vapor pressure at this point the pressure again becomes more than the vapor pressure then what happens then uh, then the these bubbles that are formed is again collapses this formation of bubble and then again collapsing of bubble leads to massive shock waves that are noisy and will certainly ruin the equipment this phenomena is called cavitation so so there are so many terms associated here number one vena contractor number two vapor pressure number three the equation of continuity number four is the Bernoulli's theorem so you, you need to go details into it to understand it completely and I would request every instrument design engineer and maintenance engineer to uh, to delve into this topic 
deeply because this is a very important phenomena for uh, for a instrument engineer or uh, asset integrity engineer so similar things we are, where we are discussing uh, for the in the respect of the control valve similar thing happens for pump pump also so the if you know this thing that pump topic will be also easier for you so ultimately this uh, reduction of the pressure below the vapor pressure and again the recovery of the pressure results uh, in the bubble formation and bubble collapsing and uh, in this process shock waves are generated which damages the equipment and pipes and this phenomena is called cavitation now the what is the severity of the damage the damage is caused when the imploding vapor bubble create a pressure waves that accelerates at a value of 1.5 into 10 to the power 11 meter per um, meter per centimeter square per second square and uh, reach the velocity which accelerates as the rate and reach the velocity of 500 meter per second so even hardened steel cannot resist such an impact even though the bubble size has a diameter of only about 200 micrometers. One through microjet generate through imploding bubbles. Second is through the cap. So cavitation damage is mainly threefold. One is through microjets, microjets that are generated through imploding the bubbles. The bubbles are there, they implode. The bubbles implode. So in this process, they generate microjets. Second is pressure waves. When the bubbles implode, they generate pressure waves, which is approximately 1000 PSI. And uh, it's also generate unacceptable level of noise and vibration that, re reduce, uh, that reduces efficiency and process control. primary factors of cavitation damage number one cavitation intensity number two material used number three the length of exposure to cavitation number four is valve size number five is design of valve and ring so these are the basically uh, when you see there is a damage or cavitation damage there are various factors that influences that damage. How, what is the intensity of the cavitation? When it, whether it is a very high intensity cavitation or low intensity cavitation. So that is one factor. Second factor is obviously the length of exposure, how long it is exposed. Whether it is a certain process condition or the certain situations, which may be, uh, may be for 24 hours in a year or, or less than that. So it is exposed for that time period only or it is a continuous exposure to cavitation. So that also uh, primarily is one of the factor of cavitation damage and obviously the material used whether you are using a hardened steel or stellated steel or you are using the normal steel or you are using a simple WCB that is important. Also the design of the valve and trim how the valve and design of the trim has been designed whether there is a flow down phenomena or something like that or it is specially designed trim to avoid cavitation so that is also important and also the size of the valve is uh, important uh, factor for cavitation damage so what are the strategies basically to avoid cavitation there are mainly three strategies number one is resistance Number two is isolation and number three is elimination. So if uh, this is a simple technique that I have formulated to easily understand the different strategies of the uh, avoiding cavitation, because if you remember in this way, it will be very easier for you to understand the process of avoiding cavitation. Otherwise, it may be all mixed up and there may be so many points and you may not 
conceptualize the whole concept so this is uh, this is the mainly three techniques this resistance isolation and elimination and the combination of these three maybe uh, resistance and isolation is com combined in some cases or in some cases all three are combined or in some cases resistance and elimination is combined so uh, either any of this or a combination of this uh, provides a effective solution towards avoiding the cavitation so first resistance so what is the resistance strategy resistance strategy is mainly to use material that are very hard and that have high fact fracture toughness and fatigue strength or that are less vulnerable to erosion damage through other means so this is the main strategy of the resistance or uh, when we say that we will avoid a cavitation using resistance we are in, we are mainly going to use this method we are mainly going to use the material which are very hard like we are going to use the stellite uh, steel in place of uh, WCV like that so a second technique is obviously isolation isolation design strategies involve designing the flow path that minimize the impingement of flashing or cavitation into critical valve surface so this is mainly the designing the flow path or through the valve through the trim portion uh, so that the, even if there is a cavitation or flashing the damp the portion that is exposed to uh, the cavitation is very minimal third is obviously elimination and there are multiple techniques in elimination also so one of the technique is uh, elimination strategies includes using the torturous path or true engineer stretching of the pressure drops across the valve. So by using the pressure drop uh, technique into multiple stages, we can avoid uh, the pressure going below the vapor pressure. And in this way, we can avoid uh, uh, the cavitation. Second is adding uh, another valve or a orifice plate to split the pressure drop across a multiple device that creates the pressure greater than uh, greater pressure in the first device reducing the potential of cavitation and third technique is obviously aspiration or aeration where uh, the high pressure air is injected into the valve so that the chances of cavitation are eliminated so these are the mainly three things resistance isolation and elimination we will discuss one by one in further detail so first resistance uh, so this resistance is uh, very straightforward this is just using material that are more hard and that can uh, withstand the effect of the cavitation for a longer period of time so mechanical attack we know that it can occur in either in the form of the erosion or the material deformation uh, and subsequent failure so we have to choose the material which can withstand the this cavitation or flashing for a longer period of time second is obviously isolation Isolation basically means that we are directing flow path in a way that prevents or minimizes the impingement of the process fluid on the on the critical surfaces. As you can see in the picture, that this is a picture of an angle valve, and angle valve is oriented in such a way that flow passes through the valve, allowing the flashing or cavitation to primary occur after the fluid has passed through the trim. Ideally, the most energy and the potential for damage associated with the flashing or cavitation will then dissipate into the flow stream rather than come in contact with the trim or other flow passage. So as you can see that this is the angle valve and the flow is going through this path and the, even if the uh, cavitation or flashing is about to occur, this will occur in this portion of the pipe. So the valve area or valve trim area is mo mostly gets saved from the cavitation. 
also uh, we can use hardened material in combination with this angular path so there we are combining the resistance and the isolation these two techniques and in combination of the, these two techniques obviously our uh, resistance or avoidance towards the cavitation will improve elimination an elimination strategy can also be used in a combination of other strategies including both resistance and isolation to treat the cavitation cavitation can be eliminated by creating more back pressure locally within the valve however this approach will not eliminate flashing because downstream pressure will never recover above the fluid vapor pressure in rare sub some circumstances the entire system pressure can be raised above the fluid vapor pressure for all process condition this will eliminate flashing but may introduce cavitation now as you can see in the picture this is a drilled hole cages and with torturous path as you can see these are the drilled hole cages and as the fluid comes it will go it, it will the fluid main fluid go gets divided into multiple path like this and also from this so as you can see this fluid gets divided into multiple path and go downwards from the center of the trim so as a result uh, number one chance of formation of the bubbles is decreased because we are increasing the pressure is not going below the vapor pressure and also even if it occurs uh, the bubbles will be mainly in the center of the trim and it will affect the material so in this particular design we have combined the three design strategies that is resistance we are using hard material stellated material we are using isolation because we flow is going downwards so that even if the cavitation occurs it will occur in the middle of the pipe and middle of the trim and it will not affect the uh, the trim parts or body parts mainly it will not affect it and also the elimination by pressure staging we will not allow the cavitation to occur if carefully designed the whole geometry the diameter and spacing it will help to isolate the individual jets as the flow passes through the cage so there is another design as you can see there is multiple stages pressure staging is happening here so this design uses all the approaches previously discussed with addition of axial pressure staging as the flow passes through the valve trim. This particular design is capable of handling up to 6000 psi pressure drop uh, while minimizing or eliminating cavitation or associated damage. So there is a, we have as we already uh, discussed that there is another technique that is called aspiration. So other known ways of fighting cavitation is injecting air into the fluid or using the vacuum pressure created by the cavitating fluid. So flashing and cavitation are the thermodynamic processes resulting from the process fluid properties and process condition. It is important to know uh, both the fluid properties such as vapor pressure So it is important to know both the fluid properties uh, such as vapor pressure and the system properties such as the process pressure and temperature to understand whether the cavitation or flashing are potential issues to address in valve selection and application. Flashing and cavitation can cause significant valve damage even with clean fluids that do not contain any solids. Many valve design approaches will handle flashing and cavitation but they generally can be categorized as using resistance isolation and elimination understanding these three general principles can help 
in selecting the ideal valve design for the RAF applications.